Hello, a big shout out to the wonderful students and teachers at Kersley Public School. They're creating habitats, they're making dioramas, and in this tutorial we're planning some of the details. Spin your splat upside down to get started. I've got a dot in the centre of my page at the top. I'm going to measure down one splat length, slide, and now draw a line. Slide the splat down until the point is now on the end of that line and draw two more on the splat angles. Here I'm using a ruler to extend those lines all the way to the edge of the page and I'm looking into the corner of my diorama. The crosses are where I'm planning on putting some tree trunks but first notice the little lines on the small ellipse they need to stay straight up and down, just like that line on your page. So I'm tracing one, two. Now I'm going to draw in my trunks. You could have a fork in your trunk, if you like. Let's erase the line that's hidden by the tree trunk. The bottom of the tree is kind of curved, and the top is any shape you like. It depends on the type of tree that you're trying to draw. These lines are like fluffy cloud lines with a few squiggles. Some of the tree trunk um, is hidden, so I'll also erase that. And the bottom of the tree I'm replacing with some grass. Here's a second tree. Notice how it's partly hidden behind the other one? That's a great way to make things look like they're in 3D. It's called overlapping. I wonder what animals you'll include in yours. I think I'll draw some native animals. Now I'm drawing a bird that's sitting on a tree branch. The tree could be just out of our view. Start off by drawing what looks like a bowling pin kind of shape. Now a beak, the eye, and that famous cockatoo head crest. One wing's open, the other wing is closed. Some bird feet holding onto the branch. Uh, tail feathers. I've gone ahead and drawn in my plan for the diorama. What do you think could be hiding in this hollow tree trunk? Let's draw a mound of dirt. A squiggly line on the bottom, and then up and over. Put a few little rocks and pebbles and then maybe some shadow in a few places. Now, how about these burrows? Well, if you hold those lines straight up and down, that makes the hole in the ground look like it's flat. If you want a burrow in this end, move those two lines at the same angle as your splat line. And when you trace around it, it looks like it's going inwards. Same thing on the other side. If you line those lines up with your other splat line, it looks like it's buried in from the other direction. Here's how to draw a hollow log using the bigger lips. So it's a cylinder, but you've traced around the outside with some rough, barky looking lines. And here on top is a huntsman spider. I wonder what he's chasing. Here's a little freshwater fish. We could have some ducks, some swans. These fish are chasing the little flies and insects just above the water. Here's a turtle, a little bit of shell, some legs, a head. And there's your turtle. Here's a water lily. The curved lines make it look like it's um, soft and like a plant. Here's a few bulrushes and plants growing beside the freshwater lake. Some little lines here and there make it look like there's grass growing. The students from Kersley have created some wonderful and colourful work. Really imaginative. Can't wait to see more. Thanks guys. I'm Glenn. Bye for now.